so then uh i played guitar got one in fifth grade and uh i just kind of sucked i was not very good I, I i don't know why it, if it was just like it was probably just the time thing i was just not putting in the the amount of practice you need to get good at it um so it was just like you know nirvana riffs and fucking intro to enter sandman you know 100, <laughs> 150 times I'm sure the name that's what i started with yeah so sure they're very stoked that. um but it was wasn't until um so i started a band i went so i moved back to colorado and uh i was going to be a pro snowboarder that's what i wanted to do so i moved up to the mountain at breckenridge and um my drummer buddy from third grade uh i got evicted out of the house that we were in because the alcoholic roommate got put in charge of rent so <laughs> that didn't work out and uh and he and that rather than staying up there and like kind of continuing to do the the snowboarding thing um my drummer was like dude let's let's fucking start a band and so we started playing i was going to do guitars and vocals could never find a bass player and um so one day you know we had gotten into slipknot back then and um one day he is like yo check out this new record he just picked up it was mudvane ld50 and uh we just got super baked or something and we were driving listening to it and it was just mind-blowingly just changed you know my perception of the instrument for sure it always grew up on loving guys like flea and and um claypool and uh um you know cliff burton jason new said that kind of stuff but uh hearing the roles be reversed almost for the first time where the bass was this prominent melodic uh like motif creator in the music and the guitar was kind of doing more what a bass would do i guess like just kind more of rhythmic, standard, like yeah just kind of rhythm. holding setting up a rhythmic thing and i just loved it we we stayed in the car we like we're, wherever we were going at the time we like we have, we have to finish this and i was like off I'll, I'll fucking play bass and so i just that's what changed it for me and i had a motorcycle i got for this old like 80 82 yamaha maxim 650 my dad bought me for uh, high school graduation uh old like chip spike but it was fun uh but sold that and was like what does right you know what does ryan play figured out what he played and i was like I'm, i you know bought what he got because i was trying to get that tone um and so that's what kind of and then it was crazy it was like it just like maybe because i was in love with it you know and maybe it was that just that time in my life or something um but it just progressed so much faster on the bass than i did uh, at guitar it was like you know within three or four months i was like you know ripping pretty fast uh, with triplets and all that kind of stuff and i just I loved, I still to this day love the instrument. I love having it in my lap. You know, I have one on my couch like all the time. Whenever I'm watching TV, there's a bass in my lap. I just, I love the feel of it. So I think like that, falling in love with it made it a lot easier to progress faster. And so then that led to that first band was called Ain Matter. And then from there, I got into Fall of Carnage in 2006. And then Cephalic, you know, went out and toured, became friends with some of the Job for Cowboy guys. So when that, their bassist left, joined that band. And then, um, and then when JFAC kind of took a hiatus there, then I joined Havoc. Um, and then um, now I'm playing in this band King as well, K-Y-N-G. And uh, I'm a ghostwriter for this thing called uh, Nuclear Power Trio. Um, they don't know that I'm a ghostwriter, but but I write all the bass <laughs> parts. <laughs> so it's just kind of, you know, and I've never like quit a band, which is funny. Uh, I did quit Havoc once, but I'm kind of playing with them again now. So it's like, I'm just, you, you not know. not permanently right you just have to like it's like until you get in you know unless you're playing in like a legacy band where you're playing arenas uh if you want to be a full-time musician like it almost requires being in multiple bands a bunch of bands yeah yeah man i'm so glad you brought up the mud vein thing because that's honestly what i heard when i heard this new stuff that i was like wow i haven't heard bass this good on a metal track since mud <laughs> yeah yeah you know i'm trying to I talked to Ryan. Ryan actually become a really good friend of mine, which is the, the it's surreal, you know. That I'm like, yeah, it's the, it's my buddy Ryan. Um, but it just so happened like I was endorsed by the same company, and then we met via that um, out at like Nam and and going over to Germany and doing these uh, base camps. Um, we're just like these giant base hangs, and um, so I try to like not copy him you know i mean i still to this day have never learned a mudbane song i you know everybody learns dig the bur burper ding um, yeah but, yeah but, <laughs> it's uh, like a meme it's that, <laughs> yeah exactly but i never i've never learned a whole song I'll, i've always you know learned little pieces and stuff but i i'm trying i'm not trying to like be ryan or or uh 
you know, I think it's just like you have this overall sphere of your playing and I end up trying to incorporate stuff that I like from, you know, anybody that I hear that is doing something cool, whether it's a guitar technique or bass technique. So, I mean, I'll, I'll, there's a little stuff from Claypool I bit. Um, yeah. Some Ryan Martini isms, which it, it they actually kind of took a little while to figure out how to do some of the things that like definitely people be like, that sounds like Ryan, you know, where he'll do this thing where he does like, like a, like an octave, um, you know, just play an octave and like, like either kind of down strum it or you can like, you know, pluck it p- both pluck things, it. but, but he slides super fast, slide up the neck immediately into vibrato and then an immediate quick slide out. But like when you hear it, you're like, that's, that's fucking Ryan's thing, you know? So little things like that where you like, they're like little nods to it. And I guess overall the tone is pretty. Yeah. Weird. Totally. It doesn't. Is- it doesn't sound like you're copying him at all. Uh, uh, but the tone, it definitely. I could hear that. I was like, wow. Yeah. Because it comes through with the guitar in a way that bass doesn't normally do in metal. Yeah. I mean, you know, you get these really highly condensed woods, uh, very very dense hard woods. Like Bubinga um, is on his like uh, his thumb, you know. But uh, Warwick started using um, Ovencall. Um, which is a little cheaper, a little easier to source than Bubinga, uh, but it's still it's very similar density. So they, it's just like naturally compressed wood, which, and then in conjunction with using like Wangi for the fingerboard and then bell brass for the frets. So on my MTD, I, I used all those same components and um, you just kind of get this like presence in the mid range of the instruments and like the low mids somewhere in like the two to 700 Hertz range. And it just, mm-hmm. It's like tough to mix it out. Even if you were to try to bury that in a mix, like it's, <laughs> it just pops out, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think that's why so many people play that stuff, you know, for rock, it's like in rock and metal. If you want to be heard, um, you know, I, that's why I try not to, I don't really over uh, distort stuff, you know, I like, I'll use distortion like a, an effect, um, but I don't really like to like have it be in my tone because I feel like that sort of just naturally compressed punchy, um, almost kind of like piano, like uh, clean bass is is sort of. Uh, I guess that's what I'm going for. It's what I hear in my head. It's what I like to how I like to express my my musical voice, man. Yeah, no, it's clear that you know what you're talking about down to the frequencies. So that's really cool. Yeah. 